This one's interesting. I haven't read this yet. I saw the news, the headline, and I wanted to check it out. So a bill would fine people for using fake service dogs. And this is in Alton. Where is Alton? Springfield, is that Missouri? Misrepresenting a dog as trained a service dog, as a trained service dog, could soon come with a hefty fine under the terms of a new proposal in Springfield. House Bill 3905 would require a person to have their dog professionally trained to wear anything indicating the animal is a service dog or be brought into any business that only allows service animals. Ah, I don't like that. Professionally trained? Because the dog training industry is already kind of a crapshoot and anybody, I mean, you can, you can train your own service dog and say, yeah, I'm a professional dog trainer. I mean, I guess technically there wouldn't be a problem if you were ballsy enough to do that, but most people are not, right? So um, I do have a problem with the dog has to be professionally trained because I know a ton of people who train their dogs by themselves. Now, I obviously don't recommend that if you're not very proficient in dog training and I would always recommend finding a professional dog trainer to work with that you know and you trust and has a long history of, you know, positive experience with their dogs and doesn't fail the dog, doesn't blame the dog, those kind of things. Um, because if a dog fails, it's your fault as the trainer or the owner, it's not the dog's fault, okay? There's always a way, there's always a way to train, uh, train a behavior positively without use of force, fear, or punishment. There's always a way. Uh, it just kind of comes down to the creativity and the skill set of the person training that animal. So, and I know this because I've worked with everything from alpacas through zebras, and they've all been undomesticated animals. Believe me, when it comes to dogs, we have it so easy when we when it comes to dogs. Oh my God, these two are so cute. I wish I could show you a picture of the two dogs I'm boarding here. They're sleeping next to each other. They had a little bit of a rough start today. Um, there was a little bit of barking, but I think it was just over excitement. And now they're both chill. They've been respecting each other's space and they've, you know, learned quite a bit about each other in just a short amount of time. And it's been going beautifully over here. So now they're sleeping next to each other, butt to butt. It's super cute. All right, let's continue. The second time someone is found to have misrepresented their pet as a service animal, they could be fined hundreds of dollars. So if they are fined, if they're found with it, they'll be let off with a warning. But if it happens a second time, they could be fined. State Representative L.A. Sean Ford D. Chicago told the House Judiciary Criminal Committee that this practice can be dangerous. It's very dangerous for real service dogs and their handlers. Quote unquote, when you have a misrepresentation of a dog that is represented as a service dog, that's a public nuisance and could cause harm to the public. Absolutely. The Department of Transportation is proposing a crackdown on people who misrepresent their pets as service or emotional support animals to allow them on flights. The bill is an initiative, and we talked about this bill, it was back in January that they started it. And we talked about this, I think, on the first or the second late night chat. So they, the, you can look this up on the DOT website to find out exactly what the requirements are. And it is, it's a little backwards because they also require, uh, require certain uh, certifications for, for emotional support animals and psychiatric service dogs. So other kinds of service dogs, but just psychiatric, which does not follow the ADA guidelines. So there's a lot of misrepresentation. I'm sorry, it's not, not, not misrepresentation, but there's a lot of incongruence with the other laws in the government. The bill is an initiative of one of Ford's constituents who trains service dogs. I wonder who that is. Hmm. Because if someone who is pushing for this bill says you have to go through someone to train service dogs, it's just going to boost your business, right? I mean, it's, it's a good business move, but it is not helpful for the people out there who may not be able to afford a dog trainer, which if you're a professional who knows what you're doing, they can cost a lot of time, a lot of money, and not everybody has all the money in the world. State Representative Ann Strava-Murray 
of Dinaperville opposed the bill. She said some dogs are comfort animals that are partly trained. What? Isn't that what an ESA is supposed to be? But ESAs don't have to be trained. I always suggest you should train your ESA, but it's a little ridiculous. Quote unquote, people have access to animals that are functioning in their lives as service dogs, she said. Adding that a formally trained dog could cost too much for some people to afford to help. I like where she's thinking. This, she said, would put them at risk of being fined. Wait, how does she figure? Listen, like you can be a first time owner of a service dog, right? I mean, you're probably not gonna be stellar at it, but you're going to be educated enough to know what the standard of behavior is. And the ADA says, you know, if your dog doesn't meet that standard of behavior, businesses can kick you out and they should. And if that's the case, you know, there should be no issue. Um, and I can't, I mean, we've, we've gone over people who are professional service dog trainers or what do they call it? Service dog providers. Um, <laughs> and they totally can't produce a good service dog. And people have been scammed out of thousands and thousands of dollars because of this. So, I mean, just because it's been professionally trained, again, doesn't mean that the dog is following a guideline. So, I mean, I don't think, what was it, Springfield, Missouri? I don't think these people have, I mean, on, on both sides, I don't think they understand, you know, the laws equally or the people who are coming and what they need it for. You know, it just, it's really weird and kind of ridiculous. All right, she says, we're now nearing the definition of a service dog to be a very specific training program that a dog has to go through. Yeah, that's way too narrow, I agree. The bill passed from committee, but it was contingent on if Ford changed it to reduce the up to $1,000 fine. Wow. It was updated to a maximum of 500. The fines would go forward to fund that would offer grants to help low income people afford the cost of service dog training. That's awesome. I really love that. So it's literally taking the money from people who are fraudulent, you know, up to, you know, warning for once, but then if it happens again, they are going to be fined and it's going to be put towards money to help people with service dog training. But again, this is a bill proposed by someone who is pushing for their own business to have someone have to go through registered vendors more than likely. And they would be getting that money from people who are using fraudulent service dogs. I can, I am really, I'm certain that this is what's happening. If it's not, then I am floored. <laughs> but no, that I mean, that's interesting to see what's going on. I mean, definitely a smart business opportunity, but not fair to the common people out there. So I'm going to check in on the chat. The federal law would override this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for sure.